has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, Carver High, we stay in baseball for the time being. Uh, we certainly do. We're about to get to tonight's games. But, of course, every week on Coast to Coast, we like to check in uh, with the awards, Scotty, and where they are at on the odds board uh, on a Thursday. So here we go. A.L. Cy Young first. Verlander and Cease faced each other the other night in Chicago. Verlander still in the lead, Scotty, with the minus 200. Cease is there. McClanahan, everybody else is pretty far out in the distance at this point. I think Cease has a shot at it now because I think Verlander's looked bad the last two outings like he's hit a wall. And he's not going to have that many more starts over five weeks, right? So if no. that trend continues, uh, that's two bad starts in a row with no results and Cease beat him. Uh, I think Cease, if he has, let's say, three or four more good starts, I think Dylan Cease might steal the Cy Young. In the National League, seems like it's over. Minus 700 for Sandy Alcantara, Scotty. Uh, Corbin Burns, Max Scherzer. Edwin Diaz, man, if Alcantara wasn't having such a, a tremendous year, that would be a sneaky good pick. It's been a long time since a reliever has won, but Diaz definitely has the numbers to back it up. He's been brilliant and fun to watch, uh, and especially with how disastrous he was for the Mets when he came yeah. over from Seattle. But now he's just absolutely the dominant guy that they wanted. Uh, this award is going to Alcantara because uh, it's over. And despite the Marlins' woes yes. and problems and losing, he's been so dominant. That's a done deal. Guy throws at least seven innings of uh, tremendous ball every single time that he goes out there. Uh, and that's been throughout the entire season. American League MVP. The judge has spoken, Scotty. Also minus 700 for Aaron Judge now uh, with Otani in the distance, uh, and deservedly so. Although he is slowing up a little on the pace, Scotty. We wanted to get him to 61. Uh, still sitting at 46 for a week now. Yeah, he's had a bad week, and, you know, I think it goes with the stench of the Yankees playing even worse than him. Yeah. But he has not had any good at-bats like the other night, he had a single, uh, and it was like exciting for people that he had a single. That's how cooled off he is. And then he got Otani having a four for five night with a home run, but all they do is lose. I still think it's judges. Uh, and the National League MVP, still Goldschmidt, getting a little smaller, minus 185 for him. Austin Riley, seven to one. Arenado now in the mix. Two Cardinal guys near the top now, Scotty, with Arenado and Goldschmidt. Well, I think it comes down to these last uh, whatever remaining weeks of how will the Cardinals do holding off the Brewers and, uh, you know, how will the Braves do uh, trying to catch the Mets? Uh, these are both, it would appear to me, play, uh, playoff teams. So who's the hottest in the last five weeks is going to get that MVP? They're not awarding that thing today. Uh, no, they are not. There you go. The awards check in on coast to coast. All right. We have games tonight. Yes, we had a lot of afternoon games, but still some games tonight in Major League Baseball. We will start at PNC, Scotty, for the Red Sox and the Pirates. Winchowski's going for Boston. Our man, JT Ice Cold Brubaker, is going for the Buckos. Minus 150 road favorite for Boston, plus a buck 25 for the Pirates, eight and a half the total. I mean, Cole Brew never wins. That's all there is to it. And he gives up lots of runs. I mean, uh, I'm on the over here again, like last night, and I'm on the Red Sox. I don't care who's pitching. The Pirates are crumbling in front of my very eyes. They lose every night of the week. We welcome in all of our radio affiliates for El Coast to Coast on a Thursday, Sirius XM 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have you with us. In the Bronx tonight, Blue Jays and the Yankees start a four-game series. Jose Barrios against Frankie Montas tonight. Uh, this one, Yankees minus 155, Scotty. Plus 130 for the Jays. Eight and a half is the total. We spoke about this earlier. We like lots of runs tonight. 
Yeah, I'm on the over. But look, I, I got to watch Montas. I have to see all these alleged five pitches in action because I, I understand where he was playing and the team around him couldn't score runs and they were a minor league outfit like a Florida State uh, like A-ball team. The A's are that bad. That's why his record is so bad. But they think that he's a postseason pitcher with five pitches. Well, I haven't seen any of that. The first outing was a disaster. The second was solid. And now tonight, I think it'll be indicative of who he is. I'm still betting on the Jays and Berrios because the Yankees are not playing well at all. They should have lost that game last night. They got lucky. The Royals head to Tampa down to the trop to take on the Rays. We have Castillo and Patino tonight on the mound. Minus 190 for Tampa, plus a buck 55 for Kansas City. Seven and a half is the total. Yeah, I, I'm going under and the Rays here. I, I think Kansas City smells. Uh, the Mets and the Braves finish off a four-gamer in Atlanta tonight. Would look a, a lot different for the Braves if they could end up winning and taking three out of four. They have Max Fried against Jacob deGrom. Mets minus 130, the road favorites. Braves plus 110, a flat seven for the total. I'm all over deGrom on Pharrell on the bench.com. Are you kidding me? And the under. I think Freed's just as tough. Not as good, but just as tough in terms of not allowing runs. No runs. Mets win. DeGrom gets it done. It's my number two play. My number one play today was the Cardinals, and they smoked. early line. Donnie, in this AP Top 25, what caught your eye? Yeah, if we're looking just at, you know, the old guard, right, which particularly pertains to the S excuse me, SEC, Alabama number one, Georgia number three, Texas number six. So three teams in the SEC in the top six. Wouldn't shock us again, Kevin, right? Two teams out of the final four will end up being from SEC competition. Notre Dame at number five. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. LSU has the same odds to win the SEC at 100 to 1 as they do to win a national championship, also 100 to 1. Well, I'll say this there are going to be a lot of really bad takes about year one head coaches and a lot of people jumping to conclusions because there are, eight, there are eight programs who have played in a national championship in the 21st century who have a first year head coach. That includes Virginia Tech because technically they played in a national championship in the first week. The Sports Grid Network. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. The reality is, is that uh, what I'm hearing is Flacco's going to play that game against the Ravens in week one. And I'm just going to put like salt on this. Flacco's better than Zach Wilson anyway. I mean, he's better flat out anyway. Like all things being equal, he's head and shoulders better than. Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson sucks. And until he, I mean. The Sports Grid Network.
Well, Carver High, I know you want to start with that San Diego game. I'll save you a lot of time. Darvish and the over. Suarez, uh, I think, is, you know, unless I'm crazy, I mean, uh, Sanchez uh, is just a disaster. 0-5 with a 7 ERA. In fact, I like the Padres to score the over in the first five innings as well. I mean, I'm going to do it every which way but there lose. You go. And lay the run and a half. And we got Darvish with the strikeouts, too. I mean, we got a whole kid and caboodle going on this puppy tonight. That's what I like to hear. Uh, I will be all over the Padres as well tonight in the prop department, Scotty. A lot of two-plus total bases uh, for the Padres tonight. Uh, let's make it happen. Uh, NFL, we did a lot of Watson earlier. There are other things, Scotty, happening around the NFL. As week two of the preseason is about to kick off tonight, it will kick off with the Bears and the Seahawks, Drew Locke was supposed to start for the Seahawks tonight to get his chance to shine in his competition with Geno Smith. But unfortunately for Drew, he picked up the Honta. And Pete Carroll says, Scotty, that's extremely, extremely unfortunate for him. Here he is. Uh, we had a thing pop up with, with Drew yesterday. Um, you know, it just came out, you know, as it happens, it came out of nowhere. And so... Uh, um, obviously, he'll miss this game, but, uh, you know, he has a chance to be back, and, you know, he's got a five-day window that he's got to take care of, and so um, yeah, it's just unfortunate that it was his turn to play the start, you know, but we'll, we'll figure it out. And, uh, you know, I'm fired up for Gino to go, and uh, he had an excellent abbreviated week, had a terrific type of a, this is a Friday type of day for us, and so he's ready to go. Listen, I, now, nobody wants to hear this. This guy looks like it has all passed him by to me. He looks really old to me. And the power is the problem. He has so much power in that organization when he got that job. He literally runs everything. He's in charge of the entire uh, Seahawk organization without fail. And I think he should have personally stepped down last year. I mean, they've been losing. They have gone off the deep end since those back-to-back -back Super Bowls. I'm telling you, like, does that guy not look old? They, he, he's so old, they actually showed footage of him like a week ago running. They're like, look at Pete Carroll running at 70 years old. How impressive. No, it wasn't. He looked 70. He looked 90 running. Okay, so he is 70, but he looked 90 running. Stop trying to play like he's young still. He's not. He looks old, finished, done. That team has no talent except for Metcalf. What else do they have? They sold every single piece of the defense. They don't have anybody. They don't have a quarterback. And they're going to pound the ball up the middle of the whole season. A lot of people think they're going to be the worst team in the NFL. He should have mm -hmm. stepped down last year. He's still hanging on. I think he looks like he's uh, two sheets to the wind. I don't even think it even had to be stepped down. I mean, let's be – I think they should have cleared the whole deck. You know, you're going to get rid of Wilson, get rid of Carroll too, completely start right. over. They had a great run, won a Super Bowl. If they were smart, they would have won two. Uh, but, you know, uh, start over completely fresh. It's like you're still kind of hanging on there with Pete. They should have kept uh, and I think Wilson and got rid of, uh, you well, know, Pete Carroll. It, you know, you know that, <laughs> they have no quarterback. Now, Drew Locke is terrible, and he was terrible oh, they, even at Missouri. He was even worse in Denver. And Geno Smith is no better than Jacoby Brissett. Uh, I agree, and this is going to be a very long year in Seattle for the Seahawks, and they very well could be the worst team in the NFL, and they tonight will take on a team that also will be in the running for the How worst team in the NFL, game? in my opinion. The Bears and the Seahawks tonight, Scotty. Here we go. Minus three and a half for Seattle. The total was 40. I've got it ticked down to 39 now for this game tonight. Uh, God bless you, Scotty. Uh, go ahead. What do you got? Listen, uh, I this is something I'm just not betting on. But if I had to, because we're on the grid, I'm going to give you what I think. Uh, they're both awful. I think the Bears are less awful. I'm going to take the Bears outright, plus the three and a half, and the under. Yeah, and remember, everybody's hot now. All those overs in the preseason games hit last week. Left, right, and center, whatever it was, 13 and three to the over. All the numbers are a little higher this week. Uh, tread cautiously if you are going to play uh, these preseason games with the totals because they put those numbers up there for a reason. Uh, the unders could be back this week, Scotty. You never know. That's for sure. Tomorrow night, we will get the Patriots and the Panthers. They have had 
a very spirited couple of days up in Foxborough, Scotty. Uh, we heard this morning that it is expected that after this preseason game, Baker Mayfield is going to be named the official starter for the Panthers in week one against the Browns. Here's Matt Rule, though, talking about all those fights. Honestly, Rule didn't seem like he wanted to talk about it, Scotty, and he had no information about any of the fights actually happening. Here's Matt Rule. Obviously, you know, we, uh, we sent Kenny off the field um, after, uh, you know, I didn't really see the hit, but I did see him standing over the player, and that's not how we want to practice, right? And so things happen in football. There were some good, clean hits, but we don't stand over somebody and taunt them. It uh, can affect their livelihood, so we sent him off. And then uh, the official sent Chuba off. I didn't see Chuba. Do, I don't know what Chuba did, but the official sent Chuba off, said he threw a punch. So um, with that, probably don't have too much more about that, but if, whatever you guys have. Is there the potential that Kenny Robinson would get cut? We'll have to wait and see about everybody. You know, I have to go. I haven't even seen the play. I mean, I saw like a video, grainy video copy. But I have to see what happened. Um, but you know, it's two days now where practice was affected by a guy. So um, uh, we'll have to talk about it. See where we are. Was there a hit as far as you know? I just, I was just told. I'm not going to talk about what I didn't see, right? They, they said, hey, they, you know, their coach grabbed Kenny and was talking about, you know, he hit him from the side. So I didn't see it. I don't want to comment on things I didn't see. He's a football guy. He's a football guy. I mean, honestly, how boring was that? Like, who cares about what the Carolina Panthers are doing in their uh, fights at training camp with the Patriots? I mean, honestly, this is uh, – there's got I had I went down to my mailbox today to put mail in and get mail out. Is that more exciting? Because that's about what I think of that story right there. Joe Burrow is back at camp playing for the Bengals the last couple of days. Scotty, yesterday – Spoke to the media. They asked him, you worried about the new contract, new t new money coming in, change the name of the stadium. They're loading up to pay Joey Burrow. Burrow says he can't think about that, Scotty. Here's why. You know, it doesn't mean anything if I go out and, and stink it up all year. So I'm, I'm approaching this season the same way I've approached every season in the past, working really hard all off season, having a setback and having to come back from it. So I'm, I'm focused on this year and, and winning as many games as we can. I mean, this guy is really a stud, and he's just been fantastic at, you know, every level. And he owns that city. He owns that state. They are going to have to give it. Literally, he's going to be the governor. By the time they're done paying him, he's the governor of Ohio. Uh they is very loved already in the state of Ohio and in the city of Cincinnati. That's for sure. Joey Burrow. Back from the appendicitis, ready to go. All right, a lot of owners, Scotty, uh, don't really hang out on the field at training camp. I mean, of course, the Jerry Joneses do. Jim Irsay is one of those owners. It's he Rick likes Flair. to hang out on the field and give you an opinion on what's going on. He threw Wentz under the bus after last year. He loved him in preseason last year, too. This year, he loves Matt Ryan right now. Will he love him at the end of the year? Here's Irsay. There's the nature boy. Uh, you know, so so there's so many positive things. And I think Matt Ryan's been everything we hoped and dreamed for. You know, I know how happy the whole organization is having his leadership uh, going into the season. And obviously we think they have gotta be hot in that suit, well. right? I mean, can so, the guy put a know, polo we're really, on? Really like, excited. God. We have a reason to be. Um, you know, we know going into it, it's about Tennessee. It's about winning the division. It's about going against those guys who have been very tough, and uh, they do a great job there uh, and, and uh, getting their players ready to play football in a tough, physical way. So it's always uh, tough going against those guys. But we know that's what we have to do. That's what we have to overcome if we want to get where we want to Good old Jim. I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen uh, an owner and a GM uh, slam a player the way they treated Carson Wentz. I mean, the way they talked about that guy throwing him out with the garbage was unbelievable. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network.
people are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rail. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full need. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Diamond being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose to maybe a small play on San Jose. I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game line. Billy's here. Prime Over minus time. 128. You do have to lay up a little bit of wood here, Donnie, but I think against Patrick Corbin. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points for the desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. Maurice Allen. 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Fantasy Sports Today. Definitely a starter in every fantasy football league. He's a top 12 quarterback in fantasy, but no longer the thought process where I guess he could be a number two, the you know, second overall quarterback or the third. Remember in years past, he was being drafted right after the first couple of quarterbacks, but no longer the case. He's kind of like a consolation prize as opposed to the main starter for a lot of people. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Can Cease become the favorite in this market by the result of this baseball game? I don't think so, because we have to remind ourselves, this isn't, you know, Dylan Cease pitching to Justin Verlander, and that's the head-to-head matchup, and who wins it gets the title belts, right? I mean, that's not, that's not the way it works here. You actually are taking a look at this game saying, how is Verlander going to do up against that Chicago White Sox lineup? How is Cease going to do against that Astros lineup? Only on Sports Grid. Diamond bets. Fernando Tatis Jr. getting popped for a PED suspension for 80 games. Now, uh, I know performance enhancing drugs are something that, you know, even here at the network, they encourage us, especially myself. They say, please, can you enhance your performance just a little bit more, Joe? <laughs> year, it's not going to happen next year for a good chunk of the season. And guess what? This is more important now that you added Juan Soto. So obviously, this news rocked Major League Baseball. Only on Sports Grid. I don't know how many times I got to tell him, uh, Carver High, if you don't get the BetMGM app, it's swinging a miss city. I mean, come on, 10 bucks you bet on any major league game, get 200 bucks your way. If either team hits a home run, all you have to do is use the bonus code MLBHR2022. I know you can handle that $10 lumber stick. Bet on a game, get 200 bucks if anybody hits a home run on either team. It's beautiful. Remember, uh, BetMGM, the app, is very significant in your life. You're going to love it. Uh, absolutely. You want to be involved with it at all times, especially here on Coast to Coast. All right, yesterday, Scotty, we played the clip of Aaron Rodgers uh, undressing all of his young uh, wide receivers and them not being uh, making mental mistakes, making errors, not running the right routes, etc. Here is Matt LaFleur. Uh, of course, Aaron talks, and then everybody's got to run to Matt. And let him know that Aaron talks and see what he thinks about it. You uh, mean so the assistant Matt coach, Matt? Matt? <laughs> yes, the assistant coach. Let's get the assistant coach's thoughts. Well, on I think the, it's more uh, the, some of the silly it. mistakes that uh, we need to get cleaned up, and just like something as simple as checking with the official before the snap to make sure that we we're eligible. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's going to be growing pains, particularly with with younger players. Um, and the thing is, and, and I appreciate this about Aaron, it's just the urgency to get some of this stuff corrected. I mean, you can't make the same mistake twice, not in this league. We don't have time for it. And um, that, that's just enough time to get you beat. So certainly he's, he's the ultimate competitor. Um, 
And, you know, I think it's good for these guys to, to feel that because we got to make sure that they continue to show progress each and every day. And, um, you know, it'll be a good opportunity today to see how these young guys respond. Yeah, you know, Aaron, the head coach, Rodgers, uh, I want to know when he retires, that's when we're going to find out, I think, if, if LaFleur is still the coach, if he yeah. can really coach. Uh, you know, because I feel like Aaron runs the franchise and the team and the decisions and the media and everything else, and this guy's just, I don't even know, standing in the shadows. Because when they play that kid love and he throws three picks in a game, you're not, you don't look like a smart coach then, do you? Like they, they still believe in this kid. I mean, I don't care who you are. You throw three picks in an NFL game, you lose. Okay. So I want to see what he does when, when, you know, you talk about it all the time, Favre to Rogers, this is easy street. I want to see when they're uh, driving on a dirt road and not a nicely paved road. The Packers have the life of Riley with Aaron Rodgers around. I want to see what they're like without him because I think they'll stink. Uh, they are due uh, to have a little medicine like that, not have a very, very good quarterback at their disposal like they have for 30-plus years. All right, uh, John Harbaugh confirms that Lamar Jackson will not play against the Cardinals in their preseason game this week. Daniel Jones of the Giants, Scotty, revealed to the media this morning that he had a neck procedure in the offseason unrelated to the neck injury that cost him the end uh, of his 2021 season. So that was kind of bizarre. Out of nowhere, Daniel Jones let everybody know that he had some neck. How about a guy had a neck problem that ended his year, and then he had surgery, a procedure for another neck issue? That doesn't sound very good, Scotty. Doesn't sound very good at all when you start talking well, about that. how about how they hid it and how uh, not only did yeah. they hide it, but how about the beat guys that cover the Giants in New York, which is – the number one media market in the world yes. and they know everything. And I never saw one story ever anywhere yeah. at any level in the tabloids or the New York times or anywhere else on TV, on the jets channel, on anything on SNY. No one ever talked about this guy having a neck surgery. Like, so mm -hmm. like who missed the boat? And I don't follow the giants and jets. Like I'm some kind of localized Homer over here covering these two teams. I can't stand either one of them. So all I know is swing and a miss by everybody. The Giants did a nice job of keeping that out of the news. Of course, last week we found out that Tom Brady was going to be gone for a while at Bucks camp. Apparently every day they keep asking Todd Bowles when he's coming back. You know, he says there's no date. Uh, it is kind of bizarre uh, the way that they handled all this, but who cares uh, at the end of the day? Is he going to be there week one when they play the Cowboys? I think that's all that matters when it comes to Tom Brady. He's done enough training camps in his life, Scotty, that if he misses 10 or 14 days down there in the Tampa heat, uh, he'll be okay as long as he's there for the first game. I think but it's nonsense it, that they it, keep it, It's okay for there. Gronkowski to miss the entire training camp and right. then win Super Bowls, but it's not for a right. guy that's won seven Super Bowls. And you've heard all these yeah. stories, I'm sure, that the reason he's not there is because his uh, wife thinks he's a terrible partner in terms of helping uh, with the kids and the house and all the responsibilities yeah. of being a, a father and a husband, that he's home running the kids to, you know, all their uh, camps and events and summer and this and that, and that he's home doing, taking out the trash and all this other stuff. I mean, these stories get worse by the day. Like, who cares? They do. I, I, if he plays one minute, I, I wouldn't, and here's another thing, Lamar Jackson Let's just save time here. There's no way that guy's playing one down until they give him his money. No. I'm with you. There's absolutely no reason to play him. Uh, Tua wants to play this weekend for the Dolphins. Uh, another guy. Why would you play any of your starting quarterbacks? I don't see the need to. Tight, uh, Colts tight end, Drew Ogletree, torn ACL. His season's over. Cowboys wide receiver, CeeDee Lamb, missed practice. Foot injury, not believed to be serious, Scotty. How about Jeff Okuda? Back from all the injuries and playing well at Lion Camp, Scotty. That's your guy from the draft a few years ago. Back playing and doing pretty well at Lion Camp. Jeff Okuda. Well, I, Maybe he'll make it. You know, you remember I, when we hosted the draft that I thought he was the, uh, you know, sleeper player in the draft, that he was yeah. going to be a great player one day. He certainly was at Ohio State. And then his – First year in the league was a disaster. He was the worst player in the draft. 
And embarrassingly, uh, I had to eat that hoagie. But I'll tell you this much. From what I'm hearing, he's playing great now. So remember, he got yeah. all injured and banged up. Uh, I'm hearing that the guy's shutting people down. So let's see if he can do it when it matters. Preseason doesn't matter. Sometimes it takes a little longer than just right out of the gate. I know everybody wants it right now, right away. Uh, sometimes injuries and learning do take time uh, for these young players in the league. Maryland State Lottery and Gaming Commission has awarded the Washington football team a sports wagering license. Team will place a sports book at FedEx Field, Scotty. There you go. In fact, while we're at it, put them in every stadium throughout the entire league. Forget Justin Washington. Everybody should have them. <laughs> Mafia said it best. Nothing like giving a gambling license to a guy that's been busted for cooking the books. Uh, yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, but he doesn't run the team. Is Tanya's running the team right now. He runs uh, the guys. team. Don't Tanya worry. does nothing. Tanya, Tanya's running the team. Uh, not Daniel no, right isn't. now. He's still, She's still out nothing. on the yacht. Uh, college for you. The Big Ten made it official this morning. The seven-year media rights deal, Fox, CBS, NBC, and Peacock. The deal is going to be worth between seven and eight Billion, that's billion with a B, Scotty, uh, for the Big Ten. Billion through 2030 uh, for all of those networks. Of course, you'll get, and look, over the air, uh, they'll have big games on all those networks every single week. Well, it's going to be great because only two teams are worth watching in the whole conference. So for $8 billion, <laughs> you get to watch Michigan and Ohio State play football. Hey. There you go. Uh, let's go to Alabama now and Nick Saban as we get ready for the start of the season, Scotty. Now, sometimes Nick comes off a little gruff and maybe unapproachable. He's one of the few coaches who still does the call-in radio show, Scotty, and he says he's a very approachable guy, and that's why he likes talking to the media and likes talking to fans on his call-in show. Here's Nick. I, well, I think that most of you all, including – person answering or asking the question sort of think I'm not approachable and I don't <laughs> think that's the case at all so one of the things that I've always found the radio show to give me an opportunity to do is to allow people to approach me and see how approachable I am so we let people <laughs> at the venue ask questions we let call in people ask questions uh, I think it's in, it's a good thing for me to, you know, see some of the media people that are actually host on the show. I get to know them a little bit better. Uh, they see a little different side of me. I see a little different side of them. So I, I think it's nothing but, you know, sort of an opportunity to build positive relationships. I think it's only cool when he takes everybody out on his speedboat. Yes, uh, he has several of those, uh, that's for sure. Lots of speedboats in, uh, in the garage. For Not Nick the prop boat, uh, though. I, I promise you tomorrow we're going to do the SEC win totals. I've been pushing them off for the last few days. I promise you tomorrow right. on Coast to Coast I will get them to you. Uh, Mike Gundy says that Oklahoma and Texas took a lot of history out of the Big 12. Wow, what a genius statement that is. Thanks, Mike Gundy Mike. still crying. About Thanks. Oklahoma and Texas leaving the Big 12. Nebraska wide receiver, the coldest Crawford with the best NIL commercial yet. A local HVAC company in Lincoln, Scotty. Your boy, the coldest. Not going to win any awards for that commercial. But, man, that's how the NIL should work in college football, right? There. I love the, the beginning coldest. of the commercial when he goes, I'm always the coldest. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia Tech quarterback uh, Grant Wells transferred from Marshall. He'll be the starter. The Week Zero game, nine days from now, Nevada and New Mexico State. We've seen the line go from 12.5 to 8.5. I'm on the Aggies, Scotty. Nevada's going to okay. suck this year. They lost everybody. Okay. And <laughs> the Aggies haven't won a game since World War I. I. <laughs> The morning after. LSU has the same odds to win the SEC 
at 100 to 1 as they do to win a national championship also 100 to 1. Well, I'll say this. There are going to be a lot of really bad takes about year one head coaches and a lot of people jumping to conclusions because there are, eight, there are eight programs who have played in a national championship in the 21st century who have a first year head coach. That includes Virginia Tech because technically they played in a national championship in the first week. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at this. Top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell and coast to CBG, coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game Packers. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game, oh, live, man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. And if we just take a look at the rushing numbers, right, 1,100 yards is the benchmark for us. Well, last year as a rookie, Kevin, we just talked about Dalvin Cook. He can never stay healthy. How about a rookie playing all 17 weeks last year with Big Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers? How about him getting 307 rushing attempts as a rookie? I thought we were led to believe also the Pittsburgh Steelers where, yeah, we're about winning games, but we don't just hand things over to guys that get drafted and are drafted Only high. on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott declines even more and loses, let's say, 15% of the touchdowns and of the yards. He's being drafted way too high in fantasy this year. I mean, the people, the, I guess Ezekiel Elliott supporters will point out, well, you know, before he suffered the injury last year, sprained, uh, I want to say his MCL, but I'm not, uh, don't remember specifically, but it was a knee injury. Before the injury, yes, he was good. But it was four games into the season. The Sports Grid Network. is Adam Kaplan, our NFL insider on Sports Grid and Coast to Coast, because he's the best. And he's always in the middle of everything. Like today, he was in Cleveland, of all places, when the Deshaun Watson verdict came down. The gauntlet has been thrown. 11 games, 5 million. Therapy, that means shrink where I come from. And they finally have a resolution that's been agreed on by the league and the PA. Adam. Yeah, so let's go to your latter point about the resolution. I could tell you from talking to multiple Browns people today, before and after practice, they're just happy to put this behind them. They're not happy that the starting quarterback, where they're paying a lot of money not to play, uh, is suspended. You know, they have this, uh, you, you, know, you talk about the, uh, the 11 game absence and of course uh, the the 5 million fine and, and the therapy but they they now know what it is there's no appeals court this is not going to federal court where Watson almost certainly would not win anyway this is it now they can move forward Jacoby Brissett to be clear is their starting quarterback it won't be Jim, Jimmy Garoppolo they're not making any trade this is their guy Jacoby Brissett they'll go forward with him as their starter until Watson comes back interestingly enough Week 13 against who? The former team that drafted him, the Houston Texans. I mean, did that yeah. not stun you that they didn't blow that off and make it 12 and just avoid that no. drama? Maybe it's almost like they're uh, sick or something, like they're asking for it. Why would they 
let him play in that game of all games to come out of prison. Okay, a couple things here. My prediction was 12. I'll admit it is 11. It is a little bit strange that it would be fewer, not more. The odd number of games, I know it's an odd season. It's We, we now have 17 games for the second straight year. We're, we're, it's going to be like that, by the way, going for many years forward. But, yeah, 11 surprised me. I did not see that. Uh, in fact, if anything, and I understand that it, the appeals officer, Mr. Harvey, Peter Harvey, did not have to actually hand anything down because this is a settlement now. Remember now, this is a settlement. This is not going to the appeals officer. That, to be clear, that's one thing people need to understand. So this is an agreement between the NFL and the NFLPA to come up with a number that both sides are agreed upon. Remember, it's a 17-game season, not 16. Uh, but the fact of the matter is uh, everybody knows what's going to happen right now, and I could tell you it's just going to be different. We'll, we'll get into what this offense is going to look like, and it's going to be different. It's not going to be the same as they would do with Deshaun Watson. It's going to be more like it would be with Baker Mayfield when he was the quarterback. A lot of running, not a lot of passing, whereas when Deshaun Watson becomes the quarterback, once they think he's comfortable, when, when he comes back after week 11, and oh, by the way, he could come back after week five and be in the building and work out and practice in 10 meetings, but he cannot play, obviously. But the offense will be different in terms of play calling, design. Yeah, they'll run it. But when Watson is at his best, it's a throwing, it's a pass, more of a passing offense. Whereas with Mayfield, and the, the Panthers will do the same thing, you're not going to ask him to throw the ball a lot, and you're not going to ask Jacoby Brissett to throw the ball a lot. That's just the way it is. And the Browns have really three or four excellent backs. So they're in good shape for that. But it, they're going to have to rein things in, not ask Pharrell, Jacoby Brissett to do a lot. And they've got a very good defense. Two, two of their starting corners really didn't work much today uh, against the Eagles. Eagles had a good practice with their offense. But uh, the fact of the matter is uh, this is going to look a little different here. And remember now, the win totals, eight and a half at FanDuel. You and I were talking off the air here. You and I are going right. to agree on this thing. They're not getting eight, they're not getting nine wins or more. They're just not without 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 having Watson for eleven games. And remember now, Watson did not play last season. Okay, he can practice now, and he could play in the preseason. But today he was taking scout team reps. Why? Because he's not the starting quarterback for three months. And Jacoby Brissett's got to get those first team reps here. So they're in a tough way here. It's just I don't see any way they make the playoffs without their star quarterback for eleven games. I got to ask you, uh, that to me seems, and I think you're right, the plan, I, I'm, I'm with you, I'm in concert with what you're saying, but I got to tell you that uh, they become predictable to me. If all they're going to do is run the football, they still have to throw the football on third down. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. know, I know they have two good backs. I know they have an alleged good defense. Let's calm down on the Browns. Uh, you know, network television and, and cable sports television networks have this fascination for the last few years with the Cleveland Browns, and they never do anything. So let's calm down that there's some vaunted dominant team in the NFL because they, they aren't and they never have been. But now you're telling me that they're just going to pound the ball, and that to me is – like I was talking to Warren Sharp about uh, predictability. There's nothing worse yeah. than having to uh, wait for third down to throw the ball because – the defense knows what's coming. And if all you do is run the football, I think the Browns are going to be a disaster. Well, I, I, Warren and I are friends, and I know Warren. He's, he and I think alike in the passing game. You come out throwing the football. It's not like they can't throw it, but you're not going to ask Jacoby Brissett to throw the ball 35, 40 times a game, not even over 30 if you, if you Fair can enough. handle that. You're not going to ask him. He's not that good of a passer. The, the way the league sees him, according to multiple personnel people I talk to, they all seem to agree. Low-end starter, high-end backup. If you only ask him to start four to six games, you might go three and three. But there's a reason why, Pharrell, these guys are backups. They're backups for a reason. They're not good enough to be one of the 32 starters. That is why, to me, Pharrell, overall in those 11 games, you're looking at three to five wins. Now, their schedule is kind of up and down. There's some games where you go, oh, wow, week one against the Panthers. The Panthers will be good. You and I talked about them last time we were on together, if everybody's healthy. But that's certainly a winnable game. So, like, the Panthers are going to be, like, 13 and four, they have some winnable games early on, but the longer you ask backup quarterbacks to start, the more they get exposed for being what? Backup quarterbacks. There's no doubt about it. Well, what are the, like, you know, coaches that you talked to and what was the feeling uh, that the uh, air was finally let out of the bag with this story finally ending today? What was the atmosphere like? And I know they were 
training with the Eagles. That's your yeah. uh, closet favorite team. Uh, you can't get enough of your Eagles. What you're doing is you're not fooling me. You're following Carver High knows and he's telling me right now he's following the Eagles around. He can care less about the Browns. He's merely well, hang hanging on. out with all his friends from Philadelphia. That's all you're doing. First of all, I'll be with the Jets. <laughs> the Jets and the Falcons on Saturday. Lord help me. Uh, but uh, no, this I, I could tell you, I, I talked to I guess four or five people today. They all seem to agree that it's good that this happened, that at least they could they don't have to wait till like the start of the regular season and it would not be dragged out. And that is I'm telling you, that is why the NFL did this, that they agreed to the settlement, because all Watson's side would do is make, try to get a temporary injunction, try to somehow find a court that would take this case and try to get him on the field. But then eventually, you know, they're going to he's going to have to come off. So this thing is behind them, and they have a good roster. Like, they know this. Like, they have a pretty good roster. They've drafted well, but it all starts at quarterback. That, that's where it always starts and ends. And Jacoby Brissett's a nice guy. He did a yeoman's job when Andrew Luck suddenly retired, as you know, many years ago. But backups always become backups. That's why they're backups. I know that's simplistic, but that's the fact. Okay, well, uh, since we're talking about backups, let's talk about uh, the backup situation with the Steelers in the same division oh. because – uh, the word is is that uh, Tomlin's going to go with Pickett uh, in the first half of this game this week and that uh, Mason Rudolph will clean up uh, after that. And I, I have to ask you not only about Kenny's side of it, but on Mason's side of it, because let's face facts. Mason Rudolph, uh, he has to be miserable in Pittsburgh because he has been the, the dog left out in the rain uh, at, when everybody goes to bed in their warm bed, they leave the dog out in the rain. That's basically the way he's been treated in Pittsburgh. Yeah, but you got to understand, Mason Rudolph is being paid very well for who's going to be a third-string quarterback this season. Here's the deal, okay? This was always their plan to kind of, kind of spoon-feed Pickett, which they did in training camp. He did very well. I get he was with the third-stringers against Seattle last week. Very accurate. Now, he's got to throw the ball downfield more. That, that's the issue with him. Driving the ball downfield. Don't be so cautious. Let it fly. Well, the hope is against the Jaguars defense this week, they're going to go, hopefully, because he'll play in the first half, perhaps the first quarter, go against the first teamers of the Jaguars, who, by the way, have a revised defense. I was with them last week. They're going to be much better defensively. Uh, they're going to a pure 3 4 front. But the fact of the matter is, Pickett was the only quarterback selected in the first round for a reason. Super accurate, good athlete playing that same stadium in, in, in Pittsburgh. This is a, this is now, this, although this game will be on the road, but their home games, of course, are in the same stadium. The fact of the matter is, this is a good situation for him. I like the way to Mike Tomlin is handling this. He's not naming anybody starting quarterback. Does Trubisky have the upper hand? Yes, that's a fact. But he's going to let Pickett get more reps here. If he passes, if, he, if he's even better than last week, possibly delay the decision and let Pickett play more in the final game, in the third game. So I'm not I'm not giving it to Trubisky yet. I, I, I know he's a favorite. I know that for multiple people at practice every day. But I do want to see how Pickett does this week because this guy is a talented quarterback, incredible processor. He reminds me of a better athletic Mac Jones, just a little bit more athletic, taller. Mac Jones is, is a super processor. He was tremendous this week against the Panthers. But your guy Pickett. With your team, the Steelers, this is their future quarterback. The future could be very, very soon. Oh, there's no doubt uh, that, that the future is a done deal. But the Rudolph I want to talk about, because he threw a dime last week uh, into the corner of the end zone, which was really, and I've been around the Steelers my whole life, and I've seen this kid since day one. I saw him play in college. That was the best pass I ever saw that kid throw in his entire career. Now, there's been talk of, moving him do they have any inclination at all now i know that's drummed up media stuff that they would trade him and get rid of him uh because it's so locked in with mitch and, and kenny what do you think yep. the steelers plans are in reality i want to hear reality not fandom on the radio yeah the fact of the matter is the most they would get would be would be a late pick a seventh round pick is the best they could do make it be conditional to a sixth teams now pretty much more or less have their, their number two quarterback. And obviously, one thing we need to mention, the Niners still want to move Garoppolo. They're going to wait till the last minute. If not, they're going to cut him before week one. He, 
Garoppolo, by the way, must be off the roster by June, uh, by August 30th, or his, his $24.2 million salary is fully guaranteed. He won't be there. Uh, unless right. somebody gets hurt, they're, they're going to they're gonna have to cut him. So, look, if you wanted a backup quarterback, you, you should have moved him earlier if you're the Steelers. Uh, but, look, Pickett, I'm really interested to see how he does against Jacksonville because this kid is r- really interesting. Now, I can tell you this, though. Not everybody around the league that I trust like Pickett. Didn't love the arm. Wasn't a great downfield throw, though he's, though he's accurate and he's a good athlete. But some teams had lower grades, like a third-round grade. Two, two uh, quarterback coaches I'm pretty close with did not get him anywhere close to a first-round grade. But the Steelers, I trust them, and they know what they're doing. So we'll see what happens this week. I have to ask you, though, like you've been around the league for over two decades. I don't believe every guy that I talk to in the NFL, uh, you know, can predict the future. They all think that, oh, they see a guy and he, they, they don't like his arm strength, his, his height, his weight, his length, his hand size, and all this combine rhetoric. I, every I've had people tell me that Kenny Pickett stinks, and I'm like, are you kidding me? What he did in the ACC last year in a pit, they were fantastic. So you're telling me there's people that didn't like him. Like, I don't believe these people. Like, like they're just saying things to you out of the blue. Like, they know this guy's no, future. Not. That kid can play no, football. That's all there is to it. And he's their guy. He's going to be their guy. No, you and I agree. He's going to be their guy. And I think he'll be a well above average, probably top 15 quarterback. You're my guy. You're my guy. Listen, go hang out with your Eagles and have dinner. Go ahead, you homie. I love you. The morning after. LSU has the same odds to win the SEC at 100 to 1 as they do to win a national championship, also 100 to 1. Well, I'll say this there are going to be a lot of really bad takes about year one head coaches and a lot of people jumping to conclusions because there are, there are eight programs who have played in a national championship in the 21st century who have a first year head coach. That includes Virginia Tech because technically they played in a national championship in the first week. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider, like, so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game, oh, live, man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. The early line. And if we just take a look at the rushing numbers, right, 1,100 yards is the benchmark for us. What last year as a rookie, Kevin, we just talked about Dalvin Cook. He can never stay healthy. How about a rookie playing all 17 weeks last year with Big Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers? How about him getting 307 rushing attempts as a rookie? I thought we were led to believe also the Pittsburgh Steelers where, yeah, we're about winning games, but we don't just hand things over to guys that get drafted and are drafted Only high. on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott declines even more and loses, let's say, 15% of the touchdowns and of the yards. He's being drafted way too high in fantasy this year. I mean, the people, the, I guess Ezekiel Elliott supporters will point out, well, you know, before he suffered the injury last year, sprained, uh, I want to say his MCL, I uh, don't remember specifically, but it was a knee injury. Before the injury, yes, he was good. But it was four games into the season. The Sports Grid Network.
Hi, right, fast forward for all in your facial. The Pharrell finish. Sabrina Inescu with 22-7-6 is the Liberty Shock. The WNBA champs, Chicago, in game one of the playoffs in the Windy City. John J. Wilder will return to the ring October 15th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn against an absolute can of tomatoes. Uh, Dana White says Patty Pimblett, Patty the Batty, is ballooning up in weight. He's over 200 pounds now, and they are having a hard time planning fights because he's such a fat ass. Former NFL player Akeem Tlaib accused of starting the brawl that led to the fatal shooting of a youth football coach. Uh, nothing like a little murder at the Pop Warner game. Uh, Tlaib's brother murdered the other coach. Great. FIU linebacker Luke Knox passed away at 22. He's the Bills tight end's brother, Dawson Knox. Florida suspected drug dealer arrested after sending a random text to the county commissioner, Carver High, asking him if he wanted to pick up an eight ball. <laughs> that didn't go well for him. They did a sting and busted him undercover. South Carolina man to break the uh, golf cart speed record. Carver High, he's got a golf cart that goes a buck 50. And I mean, that is hauling ass if you got an alligator chasing you on the course. A fisherman catches a white marlin on the Pharrell prop boat worth four and a half million dollars. A man arrested in New Jersey after driving 400 pounds of pot into Bergen County where rich white people live. That did not go well for him. He is going to jail. Ultra marathon runner attacked by a coyote while he was running in the middle of the night and the coyote shredded his face and he smashed it with a pole. The coyote ran away. The guy kept running the marathon with a bloody face. I love that dude. Eating grapes can extend your life and reduce Pharrellamentia. Mafia, can you get me some uh, grapes? Not the purple ones, the green ones. Can you get those? Thanks. Wayne Gretzky hit with a $10 million lawsuit over chewing gum weight loss allegations. He was pimping chewing gum that allegedly makes you lose weight. What an invention. Where do I stand on that? He's, he is next. See you tomorrow.